Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to this time of prayer and reflection. Very good to be back with you again uh, this morning. A little while ago, I was trying to put together a piece of flat pack furniture and uh, it wasn't particularly complicated, but it was just bulky and awkward. And as I was trying to put it together, I would try and fix one end and the other end would collapse. And no matter how different many ways I tried, I just couldn't do it on my own. I needed help. I needed someone else to take the other end and keep it secure as I uh, fixed the, the end I was working on. I'm sure we've all been in situations where we've been trying to do something on our own. We've been trying to uh, do something in our own strength and we just need the help of another person. It occurs to me that that's very much uh, what it means uh, when Jesus tells his disciples to wait for uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit, what we remember at Pentecost this coming Sunday. And it's a reminder to us of the need for us to remember the gift of the Holy Spirit who empowers us to uh, fulfil far more than we'd be able to in our own power. We're going to be thinking a little bit today about uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, at Pentecost and uh, Roger Kenwood has kindly prepared uh, a reflection for us based on uh, a reading from John's, uh, from, from John's Gospel for us today. Um, I'm going to use our hymn this morning in a slightly different way. Um, rather than having the hymn at the end, I'm actually going to uh, sing, it's a, it's a single verse hymn, and I'm going to sing it as a response to each of the prayers this morning. Um, if you want to follow along with the hymn, it's number 263 in the Red Hymn Books for those of you who have those at home. Uh, Spirit of the Living God, number 263. So as we begin our time together this morning, I'm going to uh, light a candle as a reminder of God's presence with us now as we meet in his name and his love for us. So let's begin with a short opening prayer. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of uh, St John, beginning at chapter 15, verse 26. When the Comforter comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to you to keep you from stumbling. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, an hour is coming when those who kill you will think that by doing so they are offering worship to God. And they will do this because they have not known the Father or me. But I have said these things so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now uh, we come to the reflection kindly prepared for us by Reverend Roger Kenwood. Uh, picking up in particular on that idea of when the comforter or counsellor is come. On one of our pre-pandemic trips to France, we went to see the Bayeux Tapestry. We even bought a copy to bring home for further study. One scene in particular struck me because of its heading. The Bishop of Bayeux comforts his soldiers. The picture shows the bishop 
with a sharp sword in his hand, sticking it into the soldiers in front. Sharp comfort indeed. But it reminds us of Jesus preparing his disciples for the coming of the Holy Spirit, when the Comforter comes or when the Counselor comes. Whichever English word is used to translate the New Testament Greek, neither is a complete meaning by itself. Comforter suggests an armchair or a hot water bottle, and counsellor reminds me of marriage guidance or debt counselling. In fact, the Old English word comfort is based on the Latin or French fortis, meaning brave and strong, like Corporal Jones of Dad's army with his sharp bayonet, raring to get stuck in. Jesus is telling his disciples they are called to be witnesses and to testify to all the truth they have learnt about him as the Son of God. The word witness is based upon the New Testament Greek word for martyr. Bearing witness to the truth of God in Christ is likely to stir up controversy and violence, leading to death as a Christian martyr. We've been living under the limitations of lockdown, but as the restrictions are gradually removed, we need to pluck up the God-given courage of the Holy Spirit and get out and about among the people as witnesses. The Holy Spirit, giver of freedom, maker of community, the unrestricted Lord of life and the one who stands by us in our needs and plans is ours. The Spirit is not just given to amazing people like St Peter and St Paul, but to ordinary people who can be made extraordinary by the sword of the Spirit, who has different gifts for any one of us. So often we're like the rabbits of the wild wood in The Wind in the Willows. What? Us do something? Us rabbits? Now. With the fortitude and power of Pentecost, it is time for us rabbits to escape from our burrows and bear witness to our faith. My grateful thanks to uh, Roger Kenwood for that uh, thoughtful reflection for us uh, this morning. So we come to uh, our time of uh, prayer now. And as I say, I'm going to use uh, hymn number 263 as a uh, response Uh, to each of the prayers. And these prayers are uh, prayers for the season of Pentecost. So let us pray. Holy Spirit, coming as wind and fire, free and irrepressible, we pray today for all who long for change and for all who fear it. We think of the poor and the hungry, the homeless and the refugee, the sick and the unemployed, the downtrodden and the oppressed. These and so many others who yearn for a new beginning, an opportunity to start afresh. (coughs) May their prayers be answered and their dreams realised. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mould me, fill me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Holy Spirit, coming gently as a dove, we pray for all who long for peace and all who have lost sight of what peace really means. We think of those in homes racked by tensions, families split by petty disputes, communities scarred by prejudice and intolerance, and countries torn apart by war. 
We remember especially this morning the people of Israel and Palestine. May dialogue triumph over confrontation and unity replace division. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mould me, fill me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. We pray for those who fill their lives with noise or activity, afraid of facing themselves in a time of quiet reflection, attempting somehow to mask their sense of emptiness. And we pray too for those who seek fulfilment in, what, in that which can never finally satisfy, in wealth, possessions, power, success. <clears throat> May they discover the secret of true contentment, the peace that passes understanding that only you can give. <clears throat> Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mould me, fill me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Holy Spirit, you changed the lives of the apostles and of countless people through history just as you are changing our lives in turn, each renewed through your sovereign power. Come now and change our world in all its need, so that it may enjoy hope and peace, healing and harmony, and so that all may come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mould me. Fill me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Thank you very much for joining me uh, this morning and a reminder that uh, we'll be back on Tuesday morning at the same time of nine o'clock, so do join us then if you're able to do so. So we come then to the final blessing. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us and all those we love and pray for this day and always. Amen. <clears throat>